up out of, out of New Orleans, um, man, musical scene. Like, you know, when I when I look at, at New Orleans and, and, and what y'all done for hip hop, and not just hip hop, but music in general, like it's so musical out there. Um, we talk about some of your influences coming up, some things that you've seen early on that made you really want to be a musician. I mean, honestly, uh, all the local talent that was uh, in New Orleans at the time I was growing up, when I was a kid, I mean, everything was dope, like, ahead of its time, like, you hear that shit being, like, remade now, like, in other parts of, of the country and shit, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, Soldier Slim, Partners in Crime, Cash Money, No Limit, I mean, all of them were local before they were major, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, everything coming from out of New Orleans was, was the shit. Like everything, right. just like everything. Period. Like it was just like this is the shit. That's all we knew. You know, like I was what 13, 14 years old. Like and my cousin was in the navy. Like that's how I got on Wu Tang. I would have never ever heard of Wu Tang if it wasn't for him. All cannabis, all hell, a whole bunch of people that's like regular household names together growing up in New York and shit. Now I have them in New Orleans back in the nineties. You know, right. All you heard was local New Orleans shit. Is, is the scene still like, because that was one of the beautiful things, and, and first of all, you know, it's a gift from the curse, because hip-hop is worldwide now, like, you know, a lot, a lot of people complain, like, even you might turn on New York radio, and you don't hear a ton of New York talent anymore, it's a lot of Southern stuff, and it's bad in the sense, because you don't get the hometown shot, but I get to hit, like, when I came up, the same way you talking about cannabis, and mm -hmm. I didn't hear 8-Ball and MJG coming out hard, until right. so years after it came out, and when I heard it, I was like, where's this been all my life? Right. Um, so, you know, it's the kind of the gift and the curse, hip-hop is global, we, we lose local talent. Right. The question going back to New Orleans, what's the scene like now? Is, is there still a spotlight on, on kind of local sound and, and what's going on at home? I mean, the local sound is uh, actually blowing up, like, big time. You know what I'm saying? A couple of local artists have been featured in uh, USA Today. York Times, you know what I'm saying? Like big spreads, like making nice bread. You feel what I'm saying? So that's that's what's up and that's cool. But I mean for the most part everybody's just kinda like doing their own thing. There's so many different sounds coming up. You know, you got your local dance shit, you got your, your local chill, smoke shit, you got your local trap shit, you got your local just regular New Orleans wild shit, like it's a whole pepper of shit, man. Like everybody's knowing their own thing. And Everything sounds good right now coming out of the so that's what's up. So. That's good too. And we're going to give y'all credit for our home. Jay Electronica <laughs> from there too, one of the others is doing it. And I think Frank Ocean originally Word. was from there. Like the music, is, and I think Don't that gets about my man. Not to cut you off, but don't forget about my man, Rock Kim. Definitely yeah. from yeah. the Inno. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. Rock Kim? Definitely was born in the Inno. No. Yes. Eric B and Rock Kim? Rock Kim. You, you've heard you heard it here first. That's amazing. So yeah. one one of the architects, and, and, and it's funny because you know again like New York gets all the props, and I'm from New York, and so I'm like yeah we deserve it. Right. But you know it, we ain't an isolated. This hip hop thing is worldwide. It has been for a long time. Definitely. That's crazy. Wow. You just put me on this song. Yeah man. That's a that's a little known fact. I mean I'm I'm gonna give y'all credit. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, nah, you take that. Nah, he definitely for y'all. He, he only did like a three, four year stint, <laughs> but he definitely was born in New Orleans. You, you know why I'm gonna give y'all credit for y'all having that? Because Michael Jordan was born in Brooklyn. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> what? You know, and, and again, I marvel at, at, at New Orleans. I'm really independently minded right now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about how to be more independent, how to right. And I feel like you coming up, seeing all this inspiration, like you've seen P before priority, you've seen cash money before universal. From a business standpoint, and we always say cash money versus um no limit, da, da, da. But from from you coming up, wh which one was more influential to you, if any, from, from from a business perspective, from a music perspective? Definitely no lemon at the time. Mm -hmm. No lemon was putting out I mean, no lemon was putting out CDs like every week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you had no choice but to fuck with no lemon. Like they were just Dropping too much material, like it was crazy. Like this nigga was signing niggas like every three days. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and putting them out like a week after that. So it was definitely no limit when I was younger. But as I got older, 
it kind of switched over to cash money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just a more of a raw, uh, authentic, like uptown sound that you really couldn't get from nowhere else but them. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like what Harlem is to New York. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was the best way it was explained to me. So that's, good. that's how I tell niggas. It was like, that was like the Harlem.